I'm Vera Chemi of Pasternak. I'm an Israeli artist who live here in Miami for the last two decades almost. In my practice as an artist, I am addressing issues of, I think most immigrants feel or go through sometimes in their journey moving from one place to another. I, as a lot of them, experience those feelings of loneliness, missing my homeland, missing my country, my language, my friends, my family, my culture, my music, my food. And so the move to this beautiful country was not very smooth as I thought it would be. I thought it would be much easier. But in fact, I suffered from depression, loneliness. I didn't feel and still don't feel belong after all these years. So in my practice, I'm trying to address all these issues of uh, not feeling belong uh, in my paintings as you can see here behind me. And in order to do so, I am using homeless images, homeless people that I know in person. They live near my house, in my neighborhood, where I see them almost every day. And so it felt easier for me to use their image than mine. And hopefully one day, it will be my image there too. But meanwhile, working with these homeless people, I felt like I'm healing my own wounds by addressing theirs. And so when I'm using their image, I'm actually painting my own feelings as immigrant here. So, um, so as I said in the video, the, uh, Sarah? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sarah is here. <laughs> um, so, 20 years ago, I moved here from Israel. I got married and everything is okay. It's not like somebody pushed me out of Israel or, you know, like, like a lot of millions of immigrants who has to leave their homes. It was not my experience. It's not my experience. I met my husband in a trip in Israel, I'm going to do it really, really well. And we decided to get married. I moved here 20 years ago. And um, and I thought it would be a smooth transition because I've been here so many times. And my English is not terrible, so I thought, okay, I can get a job. I can, you know. And it wasn't like that. It was very, very, very interesting. And I was going through a culture shock. Without even knowing that I'm in a cultural shop. I didn't know why. Nothing that I'm doing is like working. <laughs> uh, uh, so, simple things. Like, you gather, a lot of you gather together. I'm invited, I'm, you know, everything goes well. And then somebody says a story or a joke, and everybody's laughing, and I'm like, didn't get it. You know? <laughs> So this is like a funny one, but there were a lot of not funny ones that, were, that happened all these years. And, um, and plus I missed my mom, my family, my mom. So I don't want to make it like a sad story. It's not a sad story. I just want to give the background why all of a sudden I relate to homeless people. Because what do I have in common with them? So what I realized after a long, long time, um, I started to paint one of them who was uh, homeless by choice. If you know what it means. But anyways, he was a homeless by choice and we got together really quick. He was washing my car and right after we were like clicked and we were talking almost like on a weekly basis 
and he told me his story, veteran, la la la, and the, you know, with the alcohol, with the came back from the, they say, he said, I came back from the war very thirsty, meaning alcohol was his exit. So he lost everything, his family, his career, everything. And, um, and so I started to paint him, and I really didn't know why I'm choosing him out of all the other people, and there are beautiful people in Miami, and everybody was saying, like, why him all over again, again, and again? And I really didn't know why. Five years into it, I realized, because I was journaling, and, you know, that I related to the, to the homeless man, meaning, like, I didn't, I did have a home, and everything is okay, physically, but emotionally, I could relate to him too. He doesn't belong to the society. He doesn't feel like he fits. He doesn't feel like... So I, without knowing, was addressing my issues with his image. And that was really like cool for me to understand, like, wow, this is so cool. This is what I'm doing without even knowing that. And so I needed to find a way to... Uh, like to have my voice as an artist as well, because um, in my 20s, I went to art school in Israel. And uh, all I heard there is like, you're not talented enough. You're not this enough, whatever. And go and do something else. And I did. I went to the travel business, and I did it for many, many years. And it was OK. And, um, and here in the States, um, when I felt this depression and, you know, all this feeling and I needed an exit, I started to paint again without, like, it was like 35 years of not touching a pencil. So I needed to teach myself again how to draw, how to take a pen and a brush. I used to do oil and now I'm doing watercolor. So um, I needed to go back to it slowly. And that's how I did it. I taught myself to some of you. I went to workshops. And uh, I picked it up like that. And uh, the guy was my subject. And he was willing to pose for me whenever I wanted. And he also agreed for me to take pictures of him to use it. I remember the first one that I did. and I. I made a copy and I brought him the copy and I was so happy to show him that that he's my subject and my painting and coming with a big poster and saying, Gani, look at this. And and I'm so excited. And he's also like, Wow, that's so cool. And then, and then he's like walking with this and where should we put it? Like, I didn't think of it. It's like, oh my gosh. So Stuff like that happens all the time with homeless people. You know, you think the way you think, and you think that he's going to be proud of it and put it in his room, but there is no room. He's living somewhere. Like, I told him, where do you live? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> so um, so uh, that was one episode. And the rest of them, uh, over the years, uh, they live in my neighborhood or close by. I see them on a daily basis. I know what their spot. And I never, never, my relationship with them is more of a caring relationship than take care of them. I'm not taking care of them. I'm not trying to get them out of the street. I learned that this is their choice and they chose to be there and who am I to change that? So all I do is like I go and I stop and I say, how are you? Uh, what's going on? Joke, high five, uh, food, socks, you know, stuff like that. But not, never, never, I don't give them money. I don't try to uh, pull them out of there or tell them like, oh, there is a shelter. They know there is a shelter. They don't want to give a shelter. So, so if I don't come, Go, where, where have you been? Like, let's say I was in Israel for two months. <laughs> One of them, like, where have you been? <laughs> like, they're waiting for me. So, they allow me to take their picture, and 
And I always come and show them on my phone what I did with the pictures that I took. And they are very proud and happy. And, and they consider me as their friend. So I am, I, so what I decided during the years when I, first of all, I realized why I'm doing it. And now I'm doing it with more, like, like more force. Because I also want to use my painting to raise awareness for homelessness. So uh, homelessness is not my story, but I can relate to what they are going through. Not everything. I'm not. I don't know much about uh, 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 you know how to help people who don't need help or don't want help. But I also volunteer in a homeless shelter in Miami. I go there once a week. Uh, and this is like, wow, this is an experience of a lifetime. Like every time I go like this, I come back like, Ooh. like, you get so much, you give like nothing almost, and they give you so much back, so it's really uh, rewarding. So um, now if you turn off the light, I can show, because they asked me here to come and show how I do my painting on big scale. I usually work on a, on a roll of paper, which is uh, 40 here, 55 inch wide. That's why we need here. Here, <laughs> it's his paper. <laughs> Fabriano Artistico or Fabriano other uh, brand um, um, product. So. Um, I couldn't bring the, the roll, but I brought the biggest one that I have at home. It's 20, 29 by 41. Cold press. It's cold press. And uh, so um, I'm going to show what I'm doing is I'm using um, a projector just for the size so I can see how it fits in my paper. And I sometimes, not always, I trace it with a uh, watercolor pencil. So it will dissolve when the water marks. I don't like really to see the, the pencil marks. So I'm using those. Um, I'm using Sennelier. Uh, he didn't pay me to say that. I am using Sennelier products. I brought it, yeah, from home. They didn't provide it. <laughs> uh, and I have, so I have a few brushes, like this one is more, more like for wash. So here's something that I need to say about my art and all my process. And I'm not sure I'm going to deliver a good one today because I'm nervous talking, explaining, thinking. But sometimes I do wet on wet. Anybody doesn't know what wet on wet? Wet on wet, sometimes I do wet and dry, sometimes I wet it and I wait a little bit, almost dry, and then I go. Depends on how I feel that moment, so I'm using this for that. This brush I got a present from the Sennelier store in, in Paris. You didn't know that, but this is the one. It's so cool. Because when you wet it, because it's long, it's almost like so you, you you really cannot uh, control it, and that's why I like it. <laughs> and no, I don't. <laughs> when it comes to the painting, I don't. <laughs> I have a few brushes that Pierre will tell you later about this amazing. These are really amazing because they hold a lot of water and pigment, so you don't have to go a few times when you work on big. You really need a lot of it in your brush. So I'm using different sizes. I have one that has like uh, more of a cat stuff. So different brands for different things. They are all good brushes. And this, I don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese. But I love those. Call them relaxed. <laughs> I don't know if they are. For some people, they are 
but it's too much. Of, uh, so I know that most of uh, 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 water calories, they like to control the water. Not to let it go places that they don't want it to go. They like it, you know. I am the opposite. I want the water to run and surprise me what will happen. Many times I'm going at it, but many times the surprises are amazing. So, and plus, I'm practicing letting go. You know? So, I pray before I start, and then I go, okay, let's do it. I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm just doing it. And most of the time, I'm fixing mistakes that I do. So that's how it goes, because I'm not really. Uh, so I'm going to do it like that. I'll show you how I do it. Uh, by the way, if anybody has a question, this is a good time to ask me. Because I'm going to put a few. Uh, let's see. So this is David, one of my homeless friends. Um, I use two palettes. Uh, at the same time, I'm holding them like this because I like, and I really, I don't have a favorite color or favorite, like whatever. I don't know their names, I know them by numbers. And, and uh, what I love is to jump from one to another according to my painting. So, uh, so the only thing that I keep in mind while I'm painting is the light side where the, sh the sun comes in and where the shadow is. So for the, the, the part that's between the sun, I usually use this palette, and this one, this one. And in between, I'm trying to make them the best I can. And um, I wish J Janet Rogers would be here because I'm always like, she's in my mind. Her portraits are so soft. And, and romantic and and mine are look and I'm trying to every time I'm trying to like relax with it and then when I did it no this is too pale I need to and then I go like that go like, oh why did I do that so <laughs> so I will just trace it really quick like I just need to do the outline. So yes, I do, and what I do is like I, I purposely go block it, do something, go back, see if I did it okay. So it will be like this, like back and forth. The most important, I think, for me is the eye to be accurate as much as possible. The rest, I don't know. And yesterday I did the, 
of the city logo, Miami, the thing I want to start something new. I projected, I projected Indian I, but I was thinking to order a center. It would be easier and faster. Hmm. 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 I'm doing it very light. I just need when I turn the, the projector off, you see. I also sometimes do that kind of procedures. Which one is warm, cold? Um, I forget when I get there, I forget what I do, but you know, it's good to have it. Okay, let's. But very light, because I don't want it to. Right well, now, I have to wait for a second. So ask me. Ah, fun. You cannot see, I think. And what 
what I love about it it sprays like even the whole time and like mist not like I made a mistake with it because I scraped it and it was so strong that the whole thing was like this is really cool. This is a uh, Dega Pizza Tea Spectra Peaks. You can come and take a picture of it. Yeah, we can do it after. How is it? Ready? We are anxious to see you painting. <laughs> He's asking me for years to show him a demo, and I was like, nah, I'm not doing it. Nah. And now? I'm using um, this is green yellow by Holbein. It has it, it has a goldish right. I love it. I'm just just see. I don't remember which ochre was there. Like without this, just so, yeah, and I love the surprise. <laughs> Sometimes it's a bad surprise, but it's a surprise. I'm willing to take the risk. Ah, uh, yeah. So sometimes I start from the sun side and sometimes from the dark side. I just saw a few days ago uh, a video, another artist um, does, a, he wet the paper from the back, and so he keeps the paper moist for the longest time. I thought it was so cool because I don't know if you know about the our favorite color sonalier is the uh, Chinese orange it's such a good uh, it mixes very well with the with the 
warm colors and the dark, uh, the cold colors. So I'm using it a lot. Ah, so it happened to me. <laughs> you, think, you know what happened? Worse than that. I will, what I, I bought here to show you also is, because I won't be able to start and finish today. I bought another painting that I it's uh, almost done and show how I'm finishing if I know when to start. Yes. So I don't print them. I get them from uh, an architecture office. I, uh, so what I do is I um, I uh, uh, I seal it first with the uh, uh, like gesso. I gesso it with the clear gesso. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody uh, in my oil painter paint painting sorry, in the other one that I did with oil sticks. His hair I did all colors. Immediately everybody Medusa, Medusa, Medusa. So I was like, okay, that's a Medusa. It is. Thank you. I'll show you what this brush does. Thank you. I'll go to the, the other side. If I stand here, I'm blocking it. No, you're fine. You can see it. Ah. Oh, that's so fast. 
You know, um, I, I, we have, uh, I don't know, some of, okay, so I obviously am Jewish, and uh, we have our Rosh Hashanah tomorrow, and that's why I'm, I'm not going to stay after the, the demo, and 15 people are waiting for dinner tomorrow, <laughs> and I didn't do nothing yet, so... <laughs> Because I couldn't focus on anything but this uh, demo, so I have to rush on and cook for 50 people. So I hope it was worth it for you guys to come and, uh, and so. so this one is really like, you can't really control it. And I love that I can dance with it like this. So, Sometimes I go on a different, on another color, like layers, and sometimes, very cool. What, say it again, ask me. Ah, so that's a good question, because uh, when, I went, when I was in school, my twenties, I really I was like in love with oil, and that's how I I train myself with oil. And um, when I was here, somebody told me if you if you learn how to work with watercolor, your oil will be much better. So of course I went to look for a watercolor workshop on and. And I found, so my home, my first group was Gold Coast, uh, Gold Coast Watercolor Society. They were my first one to welcome me. I really didn't know what kind of crane, what kind of anything. And they were like, that's what you need, that's what you did. And they were welcoming me so, like, I find my home. So, that is the point. So, that's how I started it. And now I love it. I do both. So you see, I, I don't really go to the details yet. I usually don't do any details beside the eyes. Sarah, it's so nice to have you here. What a surprise! Since COVID. <laughs> yes. Yay. <laughs> cool. Now I'm gonna do the. Um, will you stay a little bit so we can talk?
Crazy, crazy. Here I'm like <laughs> keeping it a little bit under control. Let's see. 